Hi, we're sitting here with John Gallagher, a uh, comic book artist. Is that what yep. it's called? All right, so cartoonist. You, cartoonist. I yep. like that better. You may, so you're an artist and a writer. Right. And that's how you work both of them into it, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's usually the, the combination. Comic strip artists like Charles Schultz uh, are cartoonists, uh, and then you have your writers and artists who work together. Do you, which one started first? Was it the writing, or did you think you wanted to draw first? Or Well, I always, for me, it was always the art. I got obsessed with uh, superheroes by watching Super Friends cartoon shows on television, and that sort of parlayed into me discovering comic books and just trying to draw what I saw. But I never seemed to be happy just drawing. I had to come up with a story that went along with it. Okay. Are you from, you're not from the area of uh, Northern Virginia, are you? No, actually I uh, grew up in Pennsylvania in Central PA and then moved down here after college, after going to Penn State, uh, studying graphic design and worked in the advertising industry for uh, about 20 years. And was there a, a huge comic book scene where you grew up or where no, did you get the, the passion? I was really in a vacuum. I discovered them when I was very young, back when you could get comics at you know drug stores mm -hmm. and grocery stores. And most people my age know that that's, that's where they discovered their first comic, their first Batman or Archie. And uh, so for me, growing up, after a while there were no, you had to go to a specialty comic shop. Mm -hmm. and, and that was a case of my mom driving me across the river into the next town to wow. read comics. And I really only knew like one or two people that even read them. And I was the only person that drew them. So I kind of, at the time, comics had a stigma. So I stayed kind of underground with it. What was it that drew you to the comics originally? I think it was that perfect combination of words and pictures. The, uh, you know, I, at, when I was five, that's when I really discovered comics. And I liked Dr. Seuss books. Mm -hmm. But once I saw a comic, I didn't want to read those. Mm -hmm. I wanted the combination of the word balloons and the sound effects and the action. And what's funny is that you know, there used to be a reputation that comics were for people who weren't good readers. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was one of the best readers in my class because most comics are written for someone for a higher grade level than, you know, a five-year-old. They're written for practically for adults, right? Exactly. Okay, so you were, you obviously seem like a natural at art, amazing artwork and what I read, uh, Buzz Boy. Right. How hard was the writing to come to you? Is that something that came naturally as well or? I think it's funny, people always ask me that, why? Uh, why do you come up with the stories you come up with or how do you come up with your stories and my biggest problem has always been I have too many stories in my brain mm -hmm. and I think a lot of that comes from uh, reading constantly reading comics reading books once I got into comics I sort of pushed out to other other types of reading and I'm always inspired by things that I read and for me it was a case of I would read something and I'd think like, well, what happens next? Mm -hmm. And it was my mom who always first handed me a pencil and a piece of paper and said, well, you tell me what happens next. Oh, okay. And once I realized I could do that, that was really empowering. Wait a second. Yeah, exactly. I can do that? Right. So you go, you accept, you get accepted to school for graphic design, you said? Yes, I, I got accepted for graphic design. At the time, there really wasn't much of an internet, if at all. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that there were a couple schools, like School of Visual Arts and okay. the Kubert School, in, both in New York City, that catered to uh, aspiring cartoonists. So I went to uh, I went to Temple University's art school for a year, okay. then transferred over to Penn State, where once I transferred, found out they had no illustration class. So I'm pretty much self-taught when it comes to comics. It's amazing. And uh, yeah, well, it's it was one of those cases where I think most artists just they they develop a style, and I had a style that was a combination of uh, two artists: one Alex Toth, who designed the Super Friends cartoons and Space Ghost, and another uh, Jack Kirby, who co-created the Fantastic Four and the Hulk. And it was that sort of style that always sort of pushed me through, and that's pretty much what Buzz Boy looks like now. Is that as though these two guys got together on an afternoon and came up with a look and feel. I love the look of Buzz Boy. I read the whole thing. It's great. Oh, thank and you. I never read a comic book in my life besides, like I told you earlier, Mouse. That's hard to and believe. You, didn't, you never read Archie or? No, I never. Uh, I don't know why. I was uh, deprived as a child, I guess. But <laughs> my father loved them, but um, I never picked one up. And when I, when I picked up Buzz Boy, it seemed like um, oh, there yeah. was such an amazing, distinct look to all the characters. Um, right. 
How many are in this series that you have? Well, Buzzboy actually started off with, uh, Buzzboy started off back in 1998. I did my first four issue miniseries. And it's about a teen sidekick who comes out of retirement because his mentor has gone crazy and has taken over the city. And everybody thinks he's dead. And even though he's about 20 years old, they still call him Buzz Boy. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of a, a response to child stars like Ricky Schroeder and different people that grow up and they're still referred to as their childhood yeah. names. Yeah. And uh, But a lot of it was a response to the fact that uh, comics have gotten so dark over the years. They've gotten... I, I And the movies, uh, along with them, I see exactly. that they get darker and darker every movie. It right. Like. And my th whole thing, uh, growing up, I loved Batman and Robin, and Robin was so fun and funny, mm -hmm. and I always thought if he grew up, he wouldn't be like a junior Batman. He would be just as goofy as he was as a kid, because that's kind of how child stars. They, don't, they never get that reality. Mm -hmm. So Buzz Boy is extremely goofy. He's obsessed with pop culture, always making pop culture references, and especially in the earlier stories, was always obsessed with eating candy. And that's all an offshoot of when I was first trying to create a comic and come up with an idea. Uh, I, I was doing these like horror, you know, stuff that would probably be comparable to Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't really my style, but I thought it would be popular. And uh, one of my friends said, you know, I don't like it. I'm like, what do you mean you don't like it? Everybody likes my stuff. Yeah. And <laughs> she said, it's just not you. You should do something that's more like you. And I said, well, who wants to read about a character who eats too much junk food and watches too much TV? And then I, I kind of laughed and I thought, well, you know, if I applied that to a superhero story, that might be different and fun. And that's how? Yeah, that's how Buzz Boy took off. And then later on, I was approached by Cartoon Network to do a, uh, a pilot for Buzz Boy. Wow. But they wanted a slightly younger version. And I was like, well, he was a sidekick before. I'll just do an earlier story. And I wrote up a treatment and, you know, put together a lot of art and it ultimately they passed on it. But I took the story and turned that into what I was calling at the time Kid Buzz Boy, hmm. which is sort of a, a double, a double uh, description there. But, uh, mm -hmm. And that's kind of the Buzz Boy comics that I've been doing lately. Would you consider the, what was the, Buzz, the younger Buzz Boy called? Yeah, I called him Kid Buzz Boy. Was that considered another series, or was that kind of like a prequel to the? Uh, most people consider it a prequel. Okay. Uh, I have it relate. But I, I really like this one character, Becca, who's in the older Buzz Boy series. And even though she wasn't introduced until he's 20, I had to figure out a way to get her into the older story. So I actually had her use her magic. She's a sorceress to travel back in time. And what happens by the end of the younger Buzz Boy story is there's a, essentially a reboot. And it's not unlike what J.J. Abrams did with the Star Trek movies, where a character goes back in time and it kind of reboots. So it's similar, but it can be different. Wow, I don't know how you come up with this stuff. I read, like I told you, I read the, uh, the si uh, what this is that one? called? Uh, Sidekicks Rule. Sidekicks Rule, okay, yeah, I read that. I, I loved it, and like I said, first comic I've read front to back, and I was overwhelmed by how much work it looked like. And to see, if you, if you could open it up, to sure. see how many panels were on each page, how many, it was just amazing that there were that many pictures right. in each, on each page, and I was, yeah. So impressed. And then to be able to have to draw dinosaurs in the inside of a diner, because that's Buzz Boy's yeah. headquarters. Uh, it takes about, for now I put them out as graphic novels. Originally I did single issues. And it takes about a year uh, for each 128-page uh, book. And what's the difference between a graphic novel and what you were doing? A comic is usually about 24 to 32 pages. Okay. It's often derogatorily return, termed as a floppy because the early comics were much more All disposable. Paper, right? Yeah, and then somewhere along the way, someone got the idea to collect these in book form, and it was really, that was what created the success for me and Buzzboy is, once this was collected, it started showing up in school libraries and bookstores, wow. and uh, it really took off, because mm -hmm. I think my stuff's aimed at a slightly more general audience than the traditional people who just go into comic book shops. Mm -hmm. So, and then there's one new book that I'm working on uh, with my daughter, Katie, who's 12. That's great. That's called Zoe and Ketchup, and it's about a little girl and her dog and uh, her amazing imagination that all her, all her fantasies, the dog comes in there with her, and uh, she's constantly in these, in these stories haunted by uh, her little brother who drives her crazy. So it's when relatable. she goes into an Indiana Jones-type temple, uh, she's at the temple of Zach, I Want to Smack You. 
And then the temple actually looks like her little brother. Um, so usually when I'm working on comics, I'll uh, start off by doing pencils uh, and or, or tiny little sketches called thumbnails. And uh, usually they're pretty sketchy. Uh, they're, I blow them up so they're a little bit larger and I can kind of refine and figure out what I want to do with the artwork for the story. This is usually where I figure out if I've got small panels, a big giant panel, and kind of how the story is going to lay out. And I haven't done the lettering yet, but that's because I don't really know what my characters are going to say. Other times what I'll actually do is I will ink it on the computer and uh, this can be really fun, but also kind of challenging at times. Um, but there are brushes that will actually emulate the comic book uh, brushes. So just to show you, you uh, in inking, you're basically adding black lines that will, um, and that's the nice thing about computers, you can always hit the undo button. Uh, you're using black lines that will make the lines thicker and a little more uh, intentional. And the computer, even though it can be really cool and everybody likes computers, the computer's just a tool like a paintbrush or a pencil or any other tool that you might have. Now, one thing that's interesting is there are some programs that will actually fix the lines. Like if you look in really, really close, you'll see they're a little bit jaggy not quite perfect, but what I found is I actually like the fact that it's not perfect. I like the fact that it looks like it's hand drawn, and it really is. I'm using a special kind of monitor called a Cintiq, and that allows me to ink it right in the computer, and then I can even go in later on and add my own colors, my letters, and any little touches that I want to do. But uh, one thing that I really enjoy is I can mess up three or four times and I just hit the undo button and I'm like, okay, great, I'll start over. Because one of the things I always try to tell young artists is don't worry about doing it perfect, just do it better the next time. Uh, but this sort of gives you the chance to try to draw something a couple times and see if it's going to work for you. So it's kind of fun because it gives me the ability to uh, look at it really closely or really far away. Uh, and kind of get an idea of what it would look like, you know, when it's reproduced at a smaller size or even a larger size. So now, uh, this af after inking the pages, what I'll often do is this is where I go in and into refining mode. And uh, as you can see, I've I've done a lot of the inking here, but there was something that just wasn't quite right about Zoe's face. And I think part of it was she looks a little too devilish, maybe. Uh, I something just didn't seem right and I tried to think about the cartoons that I really enjoyed and the ones with kids and Calvin and Hobbes always comes to mind as well as Charlie Brown and uh, different thing different strips that kind of kept a simplistic look for kids so one of the things that I, I decided to do was get rid of Zoe's really kind of realistic eyes and play off and maybe even get rid of these kind of dark eyebrows. I made her look maybe a little evil, which even though sometimes uh, kids can be evil, they're evil in kind of a cute way. So I decided to ease up a little bit on the intensive eyes and maybe make them just kind of round dots. And sometimes that simplicity, I find, that really creates a nice universal feel that people of all nationalities can relate to. Um, and even though that's sort of a, a test, when you look at the way I did come up with the eyes, uh, it keeps sort of a, a, a fun, simple look to it. And then what I also did was I kind of went in, I decided things were just a little too sharp. Because kids don't have sharp features. They have rounded features because kids are more flexible. Than, than adults. If I wanted to show someone that was very, had a very inflexible personality, I might give them sharper edges. 
And I think that's one of the, the fun things, again, about the computer is uh, you can go in and kind of change it, but it still has this nice rough look to it. Um, and now, just to show you, I actually went in a little earlier and added color to this. Um, color, what I'll often do is I add a second layer. I duplicate my black and white layer, and then I color underneath it. There's a lot of different kinds of brushes um, where you can add colors and have a different look and feel. Now that's a little bit, it's not quite the right color for Zoe. But you can see as I color it in, it's kind of like having a big box of crayons. And then I can go in and kind of erase around the eyes. And you notice I'm keeping it pretty sketchy because I think that's one of the cool the cool sort of things when I'm playing around with stuff is just figure out what I want to do with it. And, I, and again, it's one of those things where this is fun. Um, I, I refine, refine again. And even if I was doing this on paper, um, most comics now are colored on the computer as well as the lettering is done in a program called Adobe Illustrator. Now here's what it looks like with the full color. And uh, as you can see, I, I had colored it with the, the old eyes, but I'll fix that a little bit later. One of the things I like, I like about comics is sometimes they have just big, bright panels of solid colors, and that will evoke an emotion, and that's why coloring is such an important part of the comic process. Some comics are done in black and white, and some are done with color, but uh, I find that I really enjoy the, the color aspects, and the trick is to not make it too detailed so the color can be, in a way, it's one of the characters of the comics. We came up with the idea and sketched out the in stick figure form how we were going to do the comic. And then after I drew it, she actually, uh, she actually went in and helped write all the dialogue. And a lot of people didn't quite believe that she was a co-writer on it. It's but then too impressive to believe almost. Yeah, exactly. Well, once you, I mean, if you grow up with your dad as a comic book artist and he's been reading to you all this time, different comic stuff, she sort of had it down and maybe wow. in a way that's fresher and, and newer than like what I do. Like nature to her. Almost, yeah, right? exactly, because kids are not encumbered by, uh, you know, worrying about what other people think. Mm -hmm. So their imaginations, I think, are freer. Mm -hmm. I, that's a good point. I completely agree, too. And looking at both of them, when you opened up both of the books, you can sure. see the, the John Gallagher very distinct <laughs> style, and I love it. The In the face and the eyes, the way you draw the... Both, you know, both different books, you know, right. they're completely different stories, and they have a, a look that I love so much. Oh, thank you. And but what, I, what I was confused about, of course, I was trying to understand everything about the comics. You said you went to graphic design school, and how do you put your drawings into the, the book? Do you draw on paper with a pen, or is it all on a computer? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I originally would just, because there really weren't, scanners and computers when I started drawing uh, that you could do this with, I would draw traditionally on paper. Uh, nowadays what I do is I will draw in pencil on paper, uh, usually I scan it into the computer and start adding letters onto the rough artwork huh. uh, in a program called Adobe Photoshop. And there's also another program, Manga Studio. And then I go in and I actually uh, do the dark lines, the inking it's called, uh, in the computer. And part of that is because I just, as a as a artist, push down too hard with my pen. Someone referred to it one time. One of my professional friends who who worked on Superman, as it looks like you're inking with a chocolate bar. <laughs> so, I took that to heart, and I found that I have a lot more control on the in the computer, and I use that for my coloring, my lettering. Uh, Zoe and Ketchup actually is the first one that is about ninety percent computer generated. I uh, I had an idea earlier. Um, I'd love to see you draw me because I always saw, whenever I see caricatures, I'm saying that right, right? Uh -huh. Of Obama or Jay Leno. You see Jay Leno with the chin, Obama with his <laughs> ears. Something gets exaggerated. And I always right. wondered what would be exaggerated with my face. And I was terrified of what the answer might be. But um, I never had a caricature done. I lived in New York City. There were people in the streets pestering me all the time. Right. Let, me, let me take your pic. Let, uh, let me draw you $30. It's like, well, I'll tell me? you what. I'll draw your caricature if you draw mine. I don't like that idea, but I'll do it, I guess. <laughs> I don't like to disagree on TV. It's the first rule of improv, right? Right. 
So we're going with Sharpies here. Is that something you like to draw with, or is that a caricature thing? No, actually, Sharpies I like a lot. Sometimes you have a, a pen that has a little bit of a wedge to it, uh, but I use Sharpies for a lot of my uh, a lot of the work that I do. Sometimes, if I'm real nervous, I'll work with uh, pencil mm -hmm. first, and then kind of ink it. But uh, I, there's an artist. Uh, who works, Tom Richmond, who works for Mad Magazine, and they do great caricatures all the time. I do love Mad Magazine. That is like, it's refreshing to know that there are other adults that are just as immature and, and youthful. And that's, a more, that's a better term. That's a more generous term is youthful. Youthful? Yeah, I think immature probably applies to me a little bit better. And <laughs> okay. I, I, uh, I've learned to accept my, uh, my immaturity. In a, at times, I think that that becomes a, a plus, depending on what you're doing. Like if you're a cartoonist or perhaps a talk show host. I don't know. So, uh, okay. And I always say to people, uh, give me a smile. <laughs> and do you, when you draw, some, how often do you do these caricatures? Uh, I used to never do them. I hated to do caricatures. And just more and more, I would be asked to do that and eventually just... I think what really set me off was I was going on. Oh, come on now! I'm not done. I'm. I'm this is. It's a work in progress. You understand? I do. I do. I was working on a. Uh, uh, I was on a show in Baltimore, and they came and said, "Okay, we're going to have you draw the weatherman as a superhero." And I was like, "I've never done that," and I didn't even have a pencil, and I just had to learn. Like, oh, you know what? I can do this. So it was. It was more a case of it's. It's. It's sort of an acquired ability to not worry about what people think. I think that's so much of art is just having confidence and people just never give you a hard time if they can tell that you're, you know, if, if you're doing this, I, somehow they think that you're really artistic. I hear what you're doing and it even sounds impressive. Yes, well, I cannot say that uh, having just met you, like, I'm doing this perfectly, but let's see. I think I've got you down, actually. You're really interesting. Okay, I'm almost done here. I, I think, am I a heady? I'm going to. Well, you know, as artists, we're too too exact with our artwork. And... Okay, and we'll. And uh, you always have to end with like a big swirly signature. Have you signed it yet? Very good. Okay, so. <laughs> I have a microphone. Yeah, I give like you a little it. microphone. And the camera, I Took love it. Take advantage of the nice hair. That's amazing. Uh, which, uh, you know. I don't and, know. Uh, often the eyebrows are a big part of it. If I was gonna go in, I probably would have uh, done your nose a little bit differently because, uh, it's been broken a few times. Is that it's what it is? It's kind of confusing, I'm sure. <laughs> Throwing you off a little bit. That's that's, that's great. amazing. I don't so, that took how long? Well, minute? good. Now, how'd you do with me? Well, I, I'm really kind of I interested. really enjoy your hair. Uh -huh. I do. I don't know if I captured that or did it justice. This is mine. Oh. I have the lovely hair which I tried, I promise. That's good. No. You're very happy no. to be on the show, but you're very I, what I really like is you captured my smile. You so really, you really like HCTV. I do love HCTV. That is. I figured true. I'd make it a little romantic with the birds. There's birds. And no, there, there weren't birds behind me when that. If there was, that. if if this was a three-year-old's drawing, there would, there's a sun there. <laughs> I've never drawn anything in my life actually. And That's great. I'm kind of terrified that I, but I don't know how. I don't know how you did that in in one minute. Do you do that often? Uh, I do more and more, and uh, a friend of mine, Steven Silver, who created characters for uh, Fairly Odd Parents and Kim Possible cartoon shows, wow. he was the one who, I'm, I'm lucky, he and another caricaturist from Disney, Ted Tucker, taught me how to do caricatures. I asked them for their advice, and what I found is that by drawing from real life, you can create better characters, because you've actually looked at somebody's chin or their nose okay. or their ears. All right. And uh, so basically the best advice I've, give, I've learned is I need to go back and draw more from real life. And then that can inspire when you make things cartoony. That's great. I'm going to ask you one more question before we go. Okay. Will we see a series based on John Gallagher? <laughs> well, himself? there is one story 
that I, I did called My Secret Origin, and it's about the story that I mentioned where my mom was the one who gave me the paper and pencil. So I refer to her as my favorite superhero. And I actually am oh. working on a book that's going to be called How To and Why You Draw Comics. And that's going to have little stories of me growing up drawing comics. So in a way, yes. Little John. Little John, Okay, yes. that sound, that's good enough for me. I'll buy it. I'll buy it. So John Gallagher, you can get his comics at... Uh... Comic shops uh, and on Amazon. Wow. Yep. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going. I'm going to buy some. I'm into it. Thank you so much for being with us today. Sure, my pleasure. And thank you for the caricature, and thank you for not making it insulting. <laughs> no problem. <laughs>